This is Twit. Let's do a headline. Starship. Yes. So oh, I'm just going to pull the I'm, yeah I'm going to pull the the rope starter on you because I know you've got the whole thing. What I have here in in the uh, notes is blah blah Elon blah blah Rudd blah 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 <laughs> almost block boom blah blah. Yeah, not not wrong there, but it was a really big flight. Um, no, that, that that's probably like the biggest story of the week. You know, this week you picked a good week to come back, Rod, because SpaceX. Uh, uh, launch their third ever test flight uh, of the Starship and Super Heavy launch system. Now, uh, for folks who may not recall, this is the world's biggest and most powerful rocket. It's like 400 feet tall or something or thereabouts. And SpaceX has been launching them out of their Starbase facility in you know South Texas at the Boca Chica Beach. I think it's very awesome. I encourage if you're ever in the area, please you know swing by. Uh, you can get super close to the rocket. Uh, but this was like their big swing. They officially reached, they keep saying they reached orbit, but they reached mm. orbital speed, right? right? And there's a difference because if they reached orbit, they could have done nothing and it would have just circled the planet for like an entire time. But really the trajectory they launched on uh, this flight on was aimed at the Indian Ocean. So it was always going to auger in at the end. Or or as or as their commentator called it, the Indiana Ocean, which yes, there was I that. just about fell out of my chair on that one. There was that, but um, but not you know not to, not to not to you know dim, was it dimin, not to diminish the feats that happened. Right. Uh, this actually happened as we're recording this. It happened on March 14th, so it was yesterday. So it's very very fresh. Um, and SpaceX, you know, we we sent our reporter down. Uh, days before they even had approval. They only announced that they got approval from the FAA the evening before the launch, which right. is crazy. Um, well, was it their announcement or the FAA's announcement? Well, the late. FAA announced it first, I think at like at four mm -hmm. in the afternoon, five in the afternoon, something like that. Well, they do uh, take their time, don't they? Yeah, well, they do need to get faster. And there's a whole OIG reporter, a, a, a special <coughs> report about how the <coughs> FAA has to get faster on these things. Um, but so SpaceX launched the rocket. We knew that they could because they've launched it twice before. Uh, this time they, they, they went high and faster, just like Gordo Cooper, you know, in the and uh, in the Mercury flights uh, than ever before. They had a clean, hot fire stage separation. We've got a video, I think, of it. If um, um, if we haven't showed it yet, uh, of that that last ten seconds, and um, uh, and it's just amazing to see this massive, massive rocket, uh, which is you know taller than the the Empire State Building. Um, there we go. Yeah, here, here's a video actually of reentry. Uh, which was another amazing fact. So they had a clean separation. They reached this orbital speed. A clean hot stage. A clean hot stage separation. Yeah. Uh, and then the Starship vehicle, SN20, I think they call it Ship 28. Uh, they they had a Starlink internet connection with the rocket through the bulk of, of its flight. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't seamless. There, there were dropouts. Yeah. Um, but what we're seeing here is its actual kind of reentry approach on the way down. And what was really, really interesting if we if we do want to uh, zip ahead we can um but you see the heating from that that uh uh uh, oh look that, at that! Yeah, you can see, see it. You can see it hit wow. atmospheric interface, and it just gets super hot and plasma. It's absolutely gorgeous. All of it uh, in in real time as it happened, uh, and I think this is a, a definite win because they can see how the heat shield is working in action. They can see that plasma sheath that forms around it. You know, we've only seen you know, fits and starts of this, like uh, the plasma through the window of a Soyuz or a, uh, a NASA space shuttle. So these are just truly unprecedented views. So are now, we looking nose down or tail down here? It's we, are looking, down, right? we are looking, we are looking, I believe this is... Uh, towards uh, the tail, yeah. Towards yeah, it's the towards the tail because it, these are, this is a camera on the forward ac uh, actuators. Okay. Because uh, I looking think down the towards the tail actuators. So what, what I read, I was preparing a press release yesterday and had about 14 people <clears throat> wagon with corrections and ideas which is always fun Look at oh that. yeah i see it's tail down <laughs> yeah but i guess because it was rolling they couldn't do their uh their uh their second yeah their and that, right? that's that's the part there were there were anomalies on the flight the 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 ship itself was rolling a bit and because it was rolling uh while it was in in uh in space they they opted to not do a raptor fire relight so that's a uh, that's the engine that they're going to need to you know relight when they're in in space to do their maneuvers and whatnot uh and this is just absolutely amazing this, it's this really view. something <laughs> isn't man. that isn't that awesome stainless wow. steel rocket coming back to earth um and so they skipped that now they they did successfully demonstrate the pez dispenser like payload bay 
so that they can kind of eject Starlink satellites on mass. So would you say they demonstrated they opened it, but they didn't eject anything, right? No, they didn't eject. They just they, they they demonstrated they could open it. Is what I'm trying okay. to say. Uh, they did perform an in in vehicle propellant transfer test. It's not clear how successful that was, but they were actually they actually were able to get that uh, get through that stage itself, and we're waiting for a little bit more detail on that. But it sounds like it went pretty much as expected. Um, but they did lose control of this vehicle on the way down, and so it did burn up in Earth's atmosphere over the Indian Ocean after re-entry. Um, and, uh, and the same thing happened to the Super Heavy booster, uh, which uh, shortly after its launch, uh, it did, you know, it separated. It actually did a boost back burn. This is a massive, massive rocket. Uh, and it, it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and then they lost it something like 500 meters above the ocean in the Gulf of Mexico. Like it, it, oh. it, it broke apart, but they got almost back to the ground. So uh, I think in terms of like a test flight, you could focus on, yeah, they lost the vehicles, but they were going to lose the vehicles anyway. They were going right. to toss them into the ocean and they, they got so much farther uh, on this flight than even on the second test flight where they reached space for the first time. Uh, I think it's a really big uh, a coup for them. Now, as we've mentioned before, and I know this kind of headline is a, a bit longer uh, than I'll than, say, uh, I know, right? SpaceX has a, a, a long way to go, right? They have to, they have to launch, I think maybe up to six or seven more of these this year is what Elon Musk said. Uh, they have to launch o over a dozen just for one Artemis moon landing flight. And they have to demonstrate a lot of refueling techniques, like, like robust ship to ship docking, uh, that sort of thing uh, for the future. So there's still a lot of open questions, but the rate, like if they can get through this, um, uh, this flight get through the FAA kind of investigation part of it because the FAA is uh, leading an investigation that SpaceX is over. The FAA is overseeing an investigation that SpaceX is leading, which is weird. Um, well, they have to get through that, make whatever fixes, and then they're going to, you know, try again, I suppose. So we haven't okay. talked about life support. You know, that's a pet peeve of mine. Uh, we got to talk about that too. Oh, uh, we'll just we'll, we'll put in a backpack from the dragon. Everything will be fine. So Pascal, um, Part of what we're going to talk about today, I hope, is is landing zones. But as long as we're talking about Starship, any any thoughts on this in terms of the great Martian future? No, this was a really good account. The only thing I could say is that it's actually normal for the FAA to ask the <clears throat> the craft manufacturer to conduct its investigation, mm -hmm. and then to that to uh, rubber stamp, so to speak, or you know, yeah. come in afterwards to to understand what went on and. And agree that the fix was was a good fix. Yeah, and and that's that, that's you're right. That 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 is not a new thing because all of the investigations have been led by SpaceX, and then they identify all the corrective actions, right. and then they exactly. say do it. So, uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, though, the approval process for these flights gets a bit f faster and a bit clearer because it's a lot of. Uh, from an editorial standpoint, it's a lot of travel expense money to invest into sending someone out there if you don't know if they're going to launch or not. So yep. something a little bit more than a few hours before launch would be great. <laughs> so, were, were those heat shield tiles that were being shed as well? It's very possible that there, we, what we saw during the flight, and I don't think we have video of this because it was like an hour and a half long flight, is... Um, is you did see a lot of debris pop free from right. the vehicle. They could have been tiles themselves. <clears throat> they could have been something else because they looked very wispy, almost like um, like the 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 what is it? The tel um, not the the, the the those covers that they used to put on the thrusters rod for right. the shuttles. That was it. Tyvek. It's almost like Isn't they had that Tyvek kind of or Nomex or something. Yeah, yeah. It, it had like that kind of consistency. Guards. We could see it uh, during the flight. There was also. Uh, a lot of what looked like venting from the ship vehicle in space. And it wasn't clear if that was actual reaction control system uh, firings or if it was a planned roll maneuver or if it was something else, you know, as part of like a test. So we're hoping to get a little more clarification in the future. Um, but uh, uh, these, you know, these ships, Pascal, they make a lot of them like, right. Uh, and it, it, it's clear that they're, they're trying to do the, the, the bare bone vehicle to, to perform those test objectives to get to what they want. Um, you know, because I would expect during, uh, uh, during, uh, uh, like the actual crude ones, they're going to be a lot more like, like soup to nuts locked down for that sort of thing. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out this week in space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there. <laughs>